so while writing the function or defining the function for the first time i had put order price equal to order price minus some calculation right and i had defined the order price out outside of the function and that's where the problem was because order price was not getting recognized inside of the function even though the variable was defined so here if you see the variable order price is defined order discount is also defined but these are not getting recognized inside of the function and why that is the case it is because there's something called scoping or function scopes and that's what i'm going to discuss now functions scope which is called lgb rule or local global and built-in rule i'll talk about all these things but remember this is a very important topic because uh, sometimes it ga can get confusing about the scope of a variable if you define it inside of a function and outside of a function so let's take a very simple example i'll not use the order price or order discount let's take an example let's say this is the name of the function scope underscore function and i define a variable x equal to 2 and i print x to the power 4 so which should be printing 16 i have also defined x equal to 4 and i'm printing x to the power 4 here and then i'm calling scope function and then printing x to the power 4 again so this particular function is getting called only here before calling the function i'm printing x to the power 4 where x is 4 and the moment it goes inside of the function x become x becomes 2 and again we are printing x to the power 4 and after it is done i'm coming out of the function and printing x to the power 4 again so think about it what do you think that the values would be should the value be same for all the cases of course for the first one it would be 4 to the power 4 now what about the second and the third one because in the second one i'm calling the function where x has been assigned to 2 and then i'm printing x to the power 4 and after coming out again there is no assignment to x anymore so would it retain the value 2 or would it have the value 4 you can pause the video and think about it in the meantime i'll go ahead and write the function so this is the code what i have done here is that initially i have assigned x to be 3 and then i'm printing printing 3 to the power 4 and then i'm coming here and assigning x to be 4 again i'm printing x to the power 4 and then i'm calling this function scope function where x has been assigned as 2 and then i'm printing x to the power 4 again and after coming out i'm printing x to the power 4 again so what the output should be let me go ahead and execute this and you'll be surprised to see the output you might get surprised so for the first one it is correct it is 3 to the power 4 which is 81 and then it will execute this one which is 4 to the power 4 that is 256 and then it calls the function it should be 2 to the power 4 which is 16 that is correct but after coming out of the function when i print x to the power 4 it is printing 256 again meaning that 2 that was assigned here inside of that function was not recognized by this particular statement print statement but instead of printing maybe x to the power 4 i'll make it simple i'll just print x and let's see here it is 2 here it is 40 and it should be 30 40 2 and 40 so that's what is happening so this is something related to do with the scope but let's continue the discussion now let's i do it like this so i have x equal to 4 i do not assign 4 here i do not assign x here sorry and then i print it then what would happen so i have changed the program a little bit what i have done here is that i have created two scope functions and the first one i'm assigning x equal to 2 and then printing x in the second one i'll remove x equal to 2 so now let's see what happens and here i'm printing x again so now if i execute it if you see the first one is 30 let me remove it completely otherwise it might create some confusion so i've removed it and let me execute this now okay so it is 40 so this is 40 which is correct this is 2 which is correct and then this is also printing 40 which is scope function 2 so it is printing x which is outside and this print would anyway print 40 because 
x has been assigned as 40 here. So what, in, what is happening is called functions scope or functions variable scope. So what is the scope of the variable or scoping of variables? And it follows something called LGB rule. Again, LGB rule is for the function. I'm talking about functions scope, not the scope of the entire program. So LGB means local, global and built-in variables. In the first case, what is happening? The print statement is trying to find this x and it has found x here inside of the function. So it printed x with the value which is there inside of the function. That is the local scope. In the second one, again, the function is trying to print x, but it did not find x in the function. So what happened? It went outside and uh, checked whether x is there or not. It found an x. So it printed the x with value 4. This is called global scoping. So local is within the function and global is within the program. So if the variable is not there in the function, it will go ahead and find the variable in the entire program. So if it finds it in the entire program, then it will print the value of the variable which is defined in the program itself beyond the scope of the function. If it does not find in the program also, then it will go, go ahead and check built-in variables. And if it is not there in built-in variables, of course, it will give error. So that's what scoping is. So if you define a variable, first the local scoping would be considered, which is the scope within the function. So it will check whether the variable is there within the function definition or not. Then it will go and check the global scoping, which is the definition of the variable in the entire program and then built-in variables. So let's see how it happens or how it plays out in the memory area. So this is the memory area of the entire program. The name of the program is tinayam underscore python underscore basics. Now I assign 4 to x. So x is assigned to the value 4 or x actually has the reference or the pointer of the memory address where 4 is stored. So I'm showing it in a simplified way. It is actually pointing to the memory address where 4 is stored. So this is again in the memory area of the main program which is 3 IAM Python basics. Okay, so after it is assigned, we execute the print function and the print executes x or x to the power 4 and this x is actually the value of x which is 4 or the reference of x, right? So 4 to the power 4 meaning that whatever value is there which is being referred by x, that to the power 4. So I'll simplify it. I'll say that the value of x is 4. Then I'm calling the scope function here. The moment I call the scope function, another short memory area is created for the function. So we have a memory area for scope function and it has its own boundary. So now what is happening, it goes to the function and in the function, it has assigned x equal to 2. So x is pointing to the address reference where 2 is stored or essentially x is assigned the value 2. Now when I print x to the power 4 again, it is printing 2 to the power 4, which is 16. So this statement is done, printing is done. Now the execution of the function is over. Now, as the execution of the function is over, the memory area would also go away. The function memory area or the scope function will not be there anymore. Now, if I print x to the power 4 again or print x again, it will point to the value 4 because there is no memory area for scope function anymore. So this is something called heap memory and stack memory and we'll discuss it in uh, Python's memory management. But as of now, remember that whenever we create a function, the function gets it gets its own memory area. So that's why the scoping is. Now what I want to do is that I want to extend the scope of the function beyond the function itself. Meaning that I want to extend the scope of the function in the entire program. So whatever changes I make in the function that should be visible to the outside of the program also. So if I assign x equal to 2, then it should be seen outside as well. And we can do that using global keyword. And what happens here is that uh, we define the function like this and we use the global keyword x equal to 2 and everything remains the same. 
now in the memory area what is happening it is again creating the memory area for scope function and now x is defined but x is defined as global x so x is actually pointing to the memory location of this x which is 4 so it is not using any memory location which is temporary to scope function it is using the memory location of the global variable x so that's what global means now if i assign let's say x to something else like 3 i am what would happen if i print x now it will be printed teen i am inside of the function also and outside of the function also because x is not pointing to a memory location inside of the function so even if it goes away the changes are made here because it is actually pointing to this global x variable and remember the name has to be same it cannot be global y if you use global y then there is no y defined in the main program so global keyword will not play out so the moment i change it to teen i am the value would be changed to 3 i am also now the spelling is wrong here because there was not much space that's why i have skipped one a but this is what is happening so the value is getting changed here rather than in the temporary memory area so let's look at this let's do some hands-on here using the lgb rule first and then the global keyword so this part you have already understood so what is happening here is we have x equal to 40 here so it is printing x within the global scope that's why you have 40 then i'm calling the scope function one and x has been assigned to two and i'm printing x that's why you have two here because it is applying the lgb rule then i'm calling scope function two which is also printing x but i have not assigned any value to x inside of the function inside scope function 2 so it is as applying lgb rule here also because it did not find anything in the local scope it went ahead and checked the global scope and we already have x equal to 40 in the global scope so that's why it is printing 40 here and finally also it is printing 40 because it has come out and after coming out it is as usual x equal to 40 so that's how lgb rule works for functions now remember the lgb rule is applicable only inside of the function outside of the function there is no lgb rule so if you have another variable defined let's say you have defined x equal to some string or some other important value and if you if you define x equal to 40 here it will be overwritten there is no lgb rule lgb rule applies only to a function now what about the global keyword so using the global keyword we can break the lgb rule so i'll define one more function now here i'll mention global x and i can define it define it as global and then let's say i assign it as 100 and now i will print x after that i'll call the function and let me comment the other two because we do not want to print unnecessary values it is done so now what would happen x is defined as 40 it should print x and then it will go to scope function 2 now in scope function 2 i have defined x to be global meaning do not apply the lgb rule if i make any modifications in x it should be globally applicable so then i assign the value 100 to x and i print x so obviously here it will be printed as 100 and now once i come outside of the function and print x it will also print 100 the reason is because now it is not creating this 100 value inside of the temporary memory location of scope function 3 what it is doing it is pointing to the memory address of the global x which is this one and here there we have 40 as its value when i assign 100 to x actually i'm assigning 100 to this x that's what global means because there is a global x which is actually this one now if i execute this the output should be as expected we have 40 100 and 100 so using the global q keyword we can actually break the lgp rule and apply all the rules just like any other program just like a simple program so here if i use global x the assignment would be similar to like this 
now this x equal to 100 and defining global x and then assigning x equal to 100 is similar so this is what scoping is we have lgb rule within the function that is local global and built in and if you want to break that we can use the global keyword 